We are at our Spring Valley Aero project and trim and mill work has started inside and we're self-performing quite a bit of that just because this is my personal house. And so I'm self-performing and wearing my tool bags more than I normally would. Uh, but this is a good opportunity for me to show, yes, I do still own tool bags and I still wear them. It's a weird thing in our industry. You get, in my mind, two different mentalities. Number one, either you're a keyboard contractor that wears loafers to work and don't know how to build things and therefore we should look down on you because you're a good businessman or you wear your tool bags every day and we should look down on you because there's no way your business could possibly be run correct correctly. I think that that is false. I think that uh, the best possible thing is everybody understands everything, but that's highly unlikely. And that's why people specialize in certain aspects of the job is because you're better at carpentry or you're better at business. And there's not necessarily a bad thing to being one or the other. So uh, don't take the fact that I'm wearing tool bags as a uh, plea for respect in one way or another. It's just part of my job and I haven't shown it yet. So why not? So. If you've been on the channel for very long, if you listen to the Unbuild It podcast or you follow me on Instagram, chances are you've heard me say, trust but verify. Trust but verify is one of my favorite sayings because we are told things constantly and the only way we're gonna know if they're true is if we take it upon ourselves to test those ideas, to verify those ideas, to run a blower door, pull the tape, uh, measure it ourselves, whatever that may be. So today I wanted to talk about since trim and mill work starting, what are the things that I do before trim and mill work continues? Uh, this is something that every time I'm on a project, these are the things I check before I start uh, trim and mill work. We're gonna talk about how to tell if a level is, level, is reading level, uh, how if it's reading plumb correctly, we're gonna tell if your squares are square, and how to tell if your miter saw or your T-track and your miter gauge on your uh, table saw are square. So let's start with the squares. So I'm guessing most of the carpenters watching have a uh, speed square in their, in their pouch. Uh, maybe there's another video at some point on everything that a speed square can do. But the majority of the time, what I'm using a speed square for is I'm gonna try to uh, scribe a line that's square that then becomes my cut line. Now, if I'm cutting things on the miter saw, I don't put that line all the way across. I pull my tape and I put a tick mark because that saw is gonna cut square if I've set it up properly. But if we're using a circular saw or if I'm just trying to do some layout, this guy is fantastic. Uh, this one happens to be from Swanson and this is the brand and style that I've carried for 20 years. Uh, a secondary tool that I keep in my uh, pouch, this would be a combination square if it also did a 45. I'm not exactly certain how Starrett uh, labels these. It's just an adjustable uh, square as far as I know. This one you can see has a little bit of rust on it. It's got some age. This one's probably 15 years old and it doesn't live in my pouch full time, but it probably lives in my pouch 50% uh, of the time. So we have two squares in our pouch, both made for marking lines. The question is, the trust but verify here is, what, how do I tell if this is giving me a square line? Uh, so with most things, it's gonna start with uh, a straight edge. Uh, I have to have a straight line. For most of what we're gonna do today, I have to be able to visually use my eye to decide if this is straight. Uh, of course, if it's not, I could make a cut, I could run it through the joiner until I could see it, but we have a straight line. The next thing that we're gonna have to do, and I'm gonna use a pen for this instead of a carpenter's pencil because I'm trying to be very detailed, so this is a very fine tip pen. I'm gonna scribe a line using this straight edge as a reference for my 90 degree point, and then I'm going to rotate the square the other direction, and I'm gonna scribe another line that is very close. Now, I've done this sometimes with a marking knife. A marking knife will be beveled on one side and straight on the other so that you can get right up against that edge. What we're doing here though, this will be more than fine enough because even if either one of these are off, I actually Ted did this already to check them, uh, even if either one of these was off, it's only gonna be off by enough that it probably doesn't matter for most things. Trim carpentry maybe, but they're gonna be more accurate most of the time than what you can be with a, a box store miter saw or something like that. So flipping that, 
that orientation of that speed square, what we're able to see is we're able to reference how far off that uh, the scribing edge is off of the 90 degree mark. So if the distance at the top of our marks and the bottom of our marks appears to be parallel, then we know that this was actually marking a 90 degree from that measurement. If for some reason our line ends up being off and not aligning, then we can tell that we have an issue. And flipping it like that actually will make how far off it is worse. It'll actually double the, the effect. So let's try it with this guy real quick, just to be sure. I actually think I didn't do it with this one already. Uh, and I'm again, I'm using this pen. I wouldn't normally use a pen in woodworking. Uh, it's always a pencil. But as you can see, the, uh, the dimension at the top and the bottom and my three and a half width here on this one by four is equal. So both of these guys are actually accurate. Uh, the first time I ever did this, I thought I had a square that wasn't accurate. I tested it and it was off by a 16th of an inch and three and a half inches, which means every one of the marks that I had made on a stud to cut with that square was off by a 16th of an inch. Now, it's not the end of the world in rough framing, but it certainly becomes the end of the world when you're trying to cut uh, square trim or something like that. So, what I've found is even with expensive two foot squares, they're already off a little bit. They, they come out of the box off a little bit across the board. I've never had one that I thought was perfect. We actually made a wooden square a few years ago that we still use, that's still in our job trailer, that we know is accurate, that we test. So that's step one for trust but verify. Let's move on to how to verify your level. Now we're inside, we're standing at one of the door jams in the house. And let's talk about levels. So the same thing works for level or, or, or plumb and level. Uh, and this is one of those questions that I always ask new employees, especially new carpenters, because I think it's a really important lesson. Uh, and you say, how do you know that your level is working? So the two responses that I always get, number one, oh, you find something that's level and you put it on that to test it. How do we know if that thing's level? That's number one. Uh, you f or number two, you, uh, you get another level and put them up against each other. Now, it's unlikely that they're both off in the same direction, but in theory, they could be. So checking it against another level doesn't work. So this trust but verify is actually very simple. Uh, what I like to do, uh, I like to do it with two hands here. So I will, uh, I'll put my square on the wall and I will stick the level on the wall on the jam. And the whole purpose here is that I'm gonna reference the same point. So I'm gonna look at the level and, and I chose this wall because it is ever so slightly out of level. So rather than the bubble being completely centered, it's actually pushing slightly towards my side. So if I flip the level around, push it up to the same exact spot, that bubble will give me the exact same reading. And I'm able to verify that bubble is ever so slightly this direction on this wall. Meaning A, this wall is out of plumb by a little bit. We don't care, it's within the bubble. It's really close to being perfect. But two, or B, it gave me the same reading both directions. Now, I can do the same thing. I can set this on the floor. Again, with my speed square, I'm kind of picky about this. I'll lay the speed square on the floor butt the level up against it, check what, the, check what the bubble's giving me in the middle, pick my level up, flip it around. Gives you the same reading both directions, that means it's working and it's correct. Checking a level is that simple. Trust, but verify, swap it both directions. Same thing as with the speed square. So let's go talk about cutting something with the miter gauge on the table saw. Okay, trust, but verify number three. We have a straight board, we have our saw stop table saw, we have our miter, miter gauge. Uh, the miter gauge simply rides in the T-track, it's removable. The idea is that I can use this to cross cut items the same way I might on the miter saw. And in reality, this couple thousand dollar table saw 
is gonna be more accurate in general than the $400 miter saw. That miter saw is set up to do its job and it does it very, very well. This thing is just a more accurate tool. In general, I'm more stable, I have more adjustability. It really can function the way that I want it to. Uh, and I can build a, a crosscut sled for this that runs in both rails or any number of things, but the miter gauge on this particular saw is actually pretty darn uh, reliable and accurate. And so obviously I could set my speed square on here now that I know that it's, that it's 90 degrees and try to get it really darn close with the blade. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cross cut, split this into two pieces, and then I'm gonna be able to use those pieces to reference each other. So while this edge is straight on this piece of one by six, I actually know as well, because I measured it with a micrometer, that it's actually parallel. The piece is actually a very good quality board to do this with. And I chose a one by six rather than the one by four I had earlier because it's a little wider, it's gonna tell me a little bit more. So let me make this cut and then we'll, we'll set up and we'll take a, a shot of how I'm gonna figure out whether or not it's square. So now that I have this cut, I've put a mark on each board so that I can tell where they were mated. And uh, in reality, even if this isn't a 90 degree cut, it still should seat well because it was cut on the same blade. I've lined this up against my fence that I know is uh, nice and straight from the manufacturer. And now all I have to do is flip one of the boards in its direction and when I mate the two together, you can see there's ever so slightly more of a crack here. So I'm gonna call that a 32nd of an inch again, and I'm gonna say that this saw is off by a 64th of an inch in five and a half inches wide. Now, that may or may not be a problem. It depends on the accuracy that you're trying for. In this case, though, I'm gonna adjust that saw, and I'm gonna move it a very, very small amount. Uh, chances are I actually go past it the first time. So let's move it and see if we can get it fixed. So there we go. I had to make uh, somewhere in the range of like six cuts to get these to, to line up. I kept going past in the wrong direction and uh, I had to fight it a little bit. But now I know that the zero point on that saw is set and it's accurate. The same thing is doable for the miter saw. You just flip the pieces around, you make your cut. Uh, it really is worth taking the time to do proper job setup before you start a project. Uh, it really makes your life easier than, you know, cut half the trim for the house and not realize that your saw wasn't accurate. So hopefully this is a new uh, Carpentry 101 series or uh, put your tool bags back on series. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Trust but verify. Trust but verify with your own tools. Trust but verify with the way you build. Don't forget that Matt Reisinger, Wade Paquin, Brent Hull, and my friend Steve Basic are all posting videos every week on the Build Show Network. I'm really pleased to be involved with this. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's jake.bruton on Instagram. Until next time, or until next week rather, thanks for watching the Build Show.